Plenty of music fans would give a lot to hang out with the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, U2, and Lady Gaga. But they're just part of the long list of stars Lisa Robinson has rubbed el elbows with during 40 years as a music journalist. And now she has put all those memories together. Her new book is titled There Goes Gravity, A Life in Rock and Roll. Lisa Robinson, welcome to CBS This Morning Saturday. Thank you. Good morning. You were Twitter. You were Instagram before there was Twitter, before there was Instagram. There was no Instagram. There was no Internet. There were no cell phones. And in the book, I talk a lot about the differences between being on the road with a rock band in the 70s when they would come here from England and their wives couldn't find pictures of them with any of the groupies that they were hanging out in clubs with. There was none of that stuff. <laughs> it was a lot so, more private then. Yeah, I mean, you put it in context, and you have to realize it was private. And if you were backstage with them, or if you were on the road with them, or you traveled with them, such as I did, right. um, I had to report the stories as but much as I that's could. That's a really interesting line you had to walk in those days, because to get access, to get trust, right. you, had, you had, in some ways, you kind of had to protect them, but you also had to be honest. I didn't really feel I was protecting them. I felt that um, they had a right to a private life. There was such a thing as a private life. I still feel there should be such a thing as a private life. Right. And I do write a lot about that in the book, because it's really, in context, it was just hanging out. It just happened. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all planned. There weren't publicists. You didn't have to go through a, a retinue of people with clipboards. And yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a backstage pass hierarchy, which I also write about in the book. But it, it was easier. It was just fun. You had it's such unprecedented access to the Rolling Stones. How did you get that? I had been on tour already with Led Zeppelin because Led Zeppelin wanted somebody to write about them in England about how big they were in America because they were getting terrible reviews. People thought they were a cheesy heavy metal band. And in the chapter that I have on Led Zeppelin, I talk about how I really loved their music. I was one of the few. Yeah. And so since I'd written about Led Zeppelin, Mick Jagger saw that in England and then he wanted me to come on the road with them. What, you were one of the only women yeah. journalists in those days. Right. You had an interesting conversation with Mick Jagger about women who, and he told you what? Well, I don't think I can say <laughs> all of it on air, but he just said there was no reason for women to be on tour unless they had a job to do or they were there to sleep with him, I guess, or somebody else. And how did you react to I that? I did, well, I had a job to do. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I was writing about them, but I also was a press liaison. It was at a time where you could do that. You could say to him, you should talk to this person, you should talk to this person, and also talk to me and I'll write about it. So mm -hmm. that was kind of the gig that I had. But what was it like to be a woman? I mean, it seems like the way you describe these scenarios, they were heavily, it was a boys club, and you were yeah. the one woman a lot of times yeah. backstage with these guys. What was that like? It was, I, I kind of skipped it in a way because I knew I wasn't there to sleep with them. I wasn't taking drugs with them. So in many ways, I was on a different tour and not participating in the sort of hedonistic part of it. And again, I just, I read a lot about this. It sort of weaves throughout the book because I just never felt, I felt we were all in it together. We loved the music and I was not necessarily, it wasn't even a question of equal. It was a question of just understanding the life and the world. Well, I know you call your career a lucky accident. We're thankful for that yes. lucky accident. Lisa Robinson, thank you so thank much. Thank you.